Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about A Mercy, written by Toni Morrison. Now before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. So, A Mercy follows Florence, Um, she's this black girl, Um, she was born on this farm in Virginia, Um, Her mother um, gave her up to Jacob Varks. Uh, Jacob Varks, he was owed money by the D. Ortegas. And the the D. Ortegas couldn't pay what they owed Jacob Varks. And so uh, when he's like, you know, trying to get his payment, um, Florence's mother steps in and is like, all right, take my daughter. Um, I want you to take my daughter. Now, this is what causes many problems within the work because... From the mother's perspective, she's doing the best thing for her daughter because the D. Ortegas are very cruel. They're not the best slave owners. And so, um, you know, the mother is like, you know, I need to protect my father. Um, Wow, father. (laughs) I need to protect my daughter. Um, And so um, the mother's like, yeah, I need to protect my daughter. Um, So I'm going to give her up to um, Jacob Varks. Uh, Maybe he can take her. Uh, take her back to New York, and um, maybe she can get a better life. Now, to the daughter, she doesn't take it as that. The daughter takes it as this is abandonment, this is rejection, this is my mother doesn't you know doesn't want me, and you know a young sixteen year old girl being given away. Um, you know you're young, you don't understand life, you don't understand you you know you don't truly understand people's emotions. You know. Um, Teenagers are, are not the best at understanding emotions. Kids, in general, are not the best at understanding emotions. Kids, they understand the big emotions, you know, joy, happiness, um, you know, sadness, and, and, you know, excitement, and things like that. But the, the nuances between emotions, the nuances between how people feel, you don't really understand that um, until you are you know, maybe in your early 20s, and some people never truly understand those deep emotional nuances. Um, You know, some people, it takes a lifetime for them to understand uh, those deep uh, emotional nuances, how people feel, why people do the things that they do. And sometimes your perspective of why people did, you know, did something, it's, it's not always right. It's not always true. You know, to the daughter, to Florence, you know, the mother abandoned her. The mother didn't want her. The mother rejected her. And it's something that she carried with her throughout her entire life, which is, this is one of the reasons why I love Toni Morrison, because she can face so much with emotions. Because um, this is something I feel like all humans do. When, when a parent rejects you, when, you know, a girl that you like rejects you or a boy that that you like rejects you you might not think you carry that your entire life but you'll you'll carry around those rejections those you know we carry around exceptions and rejections and all these nuances of emotions with us and they make our identities they make us nicer they make us meaner they make us gentler they make us compassionate and they can take compassion away from us so you know, emotions and feelings and these things that people do to us, they do affect our dispositions, our mentalities, the way we th- we see the world, the way we see other people, the way we think about ourselves. These things do matter. And this book really shows how, how this form of rejection from Florence's point of view affects her life because it really, really does affect the outcome, affect the outcome of Florence's life. Because in her perspective, her mother is rejecting her, abandoning her, leaving her. Um, and to a young teenager, that is, you know, world shattering that, you know, this human being that, you know, brought you into the world would just give up on you and give you away to some person as, you know, you know, there's just payment for the debt that your owner owed. But again, the nuances of slavery are even more deeper than we can even think and everything that's going on in there because the mother loved her daughter, but she was thinking, I'm going to lose my daughter, probably never going to see her again. Um, This is the end of our relationship, but I have to make the sacrifice so that she can have a better life. And this is what it takes to be a parent. Um, And so... 
Um, what the mother saw was that uh, Jacob Varks was much nicer and he had a kindness within him that the Dior Takas didn't have. So the mother was like, I'm not going to be selfish. I'm going to let, you know, Far Varks, Jacob Varks take the do take my daughter because she'll have a better life and she won't have to live the cruelty that I have lived through. Um, so that's her mindset. That's the mother's mindset. But the daughter's like, no, my mom's abandoning me. So um, Florence goes to rural New York, and he and she goes to live with the with Jacob Varks and and his plant and his farm, with Rebecca Varks, and it's a great farm, you know. Um, the 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 slaves are getting treated well. Uh, we get to know the slaves better. Their story gets woven into Florence's story. Um, and it's like a ragtag team of slaves and owners and it's kind of like a, a messed up family for the time period that this is being written in um or for the atmosphere that this is being written in uh but you know it's, it's good life is good everything is going well um but then jacob vark he gets sick he dies rebecca vark she has to take the mantle of the farm and then manage the farm but again uh, women taking care of property during this time is just unheard of and you know she's struggling and things are not going well um ultimately what happens is florence you know she f falls in love with this blacksmith and he's a freed man um and she was going to get married with him and everything was going to go well and you're going to have a life and everything you know this was everything was looking up and the farm was changing because rebecca vark was in charge now the farm was changing and um, you know, she wasn't as nice as she used to be and things are changing on the farm. Um, and she's becoming, Rebecca Varka is becoming more cruel. And ultimately Florence goes off to be with the blacksmith, but then the rejection of the mother, the rejection of her mother, banning her of, you know, facing those experiences come back. And, you know, the blacksmith leaves the little boy in the care of Florence. Well, you know, he goes to take care of, of Rebecca for a while. And Florence starts to think about the rejection of her mother and how her life has went. And, you know, she breaks the little boy's arm, you know, because she is just worried and she's in her head and she's being cruel towards the boy. And the boy's arm ends up getting broken and the blacksmith sees it all. And he's like, you know, I, I can't deal with you. I don't want to be with you. And he pretty much, you know, just kicks her out of his life and um you know she has to go back to the farm and um florence goes back to the farm and now it's you know pretty much you know put over her head that uh, she's going to be sold and again you know when a slave gets sold it's it's a it's a game of roulette you don't know where you're going to land and you don't know if you're going to get a good master or a bad master and you know, uh, Florence is like staying in the old, the new house that Jacob Vark's built. Vark built before um, he died, and um, she pretty much is kind of like writing an explanation of everything that happened to the blacksmith um, on the wall on the cat on um, you know the newly built home. And uh, by the end of the work, we get a, a kind of like an insight to the the mother's reasoning to. Uh, why she let go of Florence and you know she's like you know I hope that Florence will understand one day that I didn't hate her uh, that you know I, I loved her that you know I, I hope one day she can forgive me I did it for her own good you know I, I wanted her to have a good life um, but again and again Florence didn't see it like that Florence didn't understand it like that she just saw it as she was being abandoned uh, by her mother and that abandonment that projection uh, influenced her whole life um you know uh, again for slaves abandonment rejection um you know loneliness um sorrow this is something that was common in the slave's life because you didn't have freedom over your body freedom over your children you know your children could be taken away from you uh you could be beaten raped abused sold you know, the, um, you know, the depravity of human mind when it comes to taking advantage of others could, you know, land you anywhere. So you were just at the mercy of, uh, you know, your your master and your seller and whoever purchased you. You just had to just wait and see what would happen to you. 
Um, so the, the work pretty much ends with Florence in that type of uh, I, um, mindset. She's she's on the farm. She could be sold at any time. She's working. She's alive. Um, we get an insight into her mother, why her mother did that. And we also see how, you know, past um, grievances, past traumas affect the present and the future. And it's something that Florence will have to deal with until she dies. Uh, the other characters are very interesting. We, we see so many different characters and their, their, you know, how their lives came about, how they were born, how they were abandoned. Um, again, slavery was not, uh, was not fun. Um, many different things happened that, you know, that are unspeakable. In terms of deeper meaning, in terms of analysis, this work is uh, very interesting. Uh, mercy. Um, I, I do see mercy, like, okay, for me, when I think about mercy, I, I think the mother, um, Florence's mother, she believed that she was being merciful um, towards the daughter. Uh, because she, in her mind, she was being a hero from saving her from the, the Ortegas and giving her over to the Varks. But then fate is fate. Um, Florence still had a tough and horrible life because the man that she loved kicked her out. The, the master that was good to her died. And she's still on the chopping block for being sold. So the mother did the best that she thought was the best but still it's still slave to the time of slavery so you know florence is not safe um that rejection is not easy to deal with um so different people try to apply mercy um within this work but it, it's huh it, it's just not what you would expect, um, you know, the, the pain that these people experience between romance, love, masters, being betrayed, being abandoned, um, and certain people trying to, you know, save individuals from horrors that they see coming, it doesn't always end up how you would expect it. Um, so it is, it is very fascinating how it happens. Um, and you see how people change, um, um, events change people, emotions change people. Um, Rebecca is completely different after her husband dies. She, she becomes more cruel. She, she changes her attitudes. Um, and so uh, I think one thing with the era of slavery that this, this work proves is that, uh, with cruelty, with, with, um, people not being free, um, morally, ethically, emotionally, uh, no one walked away scot-free. Um, cause I mean, you could tell yourself at night that, you know, the slaves were just slaves and you were superior. You could tell yourself that as much as you want, but you know, in the back of your mind, these are walking people in front of you. You have to talk to them. You have to see them cry. You have to see them, their kids get stolen from them. Their, the faces that they make when they're being beaten or killed, those things at some point, somewhere in your mind, they do haunt you at night. Um, and it's a reality that, that influences, that, that seeps into your attitude, to your disposition. Um, so, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely different nuances that, um, this work covers. But um, that's all I have to say about this work. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.